Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Or if you've never seen me before, then hi, welcome. So in today's video, you guessed it, I'm gonna be doing another reading vlog, but this reading vlog has, let's say, a specific theme to it. So as you all know, fall is coming. Well, it's already here, but like now we're actually getting into the fall season. We're feeling the fall vibes. I mean, actually, I'm just imagining right now that it's the fall where I live. It's just for me, like right now, it's over 100 degrees every day. Day. It is what it is. You know, but still, every time September starts, all through October and November, I still like to imagine the leaves are actually changing color where I live, and I just like to get into the fall vibes, even though we don't actually experience the fall season where I live. But you know, I like to buy fall candles, I like to buy fall clothes, even though I'm gonna be like sweating so much outside for the aesthetic of it, for the vibes. And another thing I like to do, which is part of what I'm going to be doing in this video, is I like to get into that mood when it comes to my reading as well. So this week, I'm going to be reading only fall themed books. So I did my research and I have found three books that are said to be fall themed. I think it's just because all of them, like the story is during the fall season. I mean, obviously I couldn't think of any other reason. And I was gonna buy them, but then I also found out they were all in Kindle Unlimited. So why not read them all on my Kindle? I love reading on my Kindle. I pay for Kindle Unlimited, so gotta take advantage of that. And like I always say, you know, if I really end up loving the book, I'm gonna buy it. Just because I also love to just collect books. So before I start reading all these books, I'm just gonna tell them to you guys. So the first book is called Awkward in October by Teresa Yay? Ye? I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce her last name, but yeah, that's the book. You can obviously see, like, all these books have a very also fall-themed cover. The next book is called Autumn Sky by Jenna Starley. And finally, we have Just Don't Fall by Emma St. Clair. So those are all the books. I'm obviously going to be telling you guys about them as I'm reading them. And as I always say, I don't know which book I'm going to be reading first, but when I do, I'll definitely let you guys know. And yeah, let's get into it. much much later and I just wanted to update you guys because I was about to take a shower get ready for bed but I just thought I'd do it after I update you guys and let you guys know first of all what book I chose I haven't even told you that and how much I've been reading and just tell you guys about the book so the book that I chose first oh, I hate that when you're about to sneeze and then you don't sneeze oh, I hate that I hate that feeling Anyways, the book I chose first to read this week was Just Don't Fall. Currently, I'm on page 75, so I'm not even halfway through the book. Yeah, that's where I'm at right now. But I do think I know what this book's gonna be about. It's about Parker and Logan, and they kind of have a past. Parker has a brother, and Logan was his best friend. So Parker would be around Logan all the time, and she's kind of always had a crush on him. But then something happened. I don't know the details of it yet, but I do know that he kind of just like ghosted them and left without saying a word and never talked to them again but then he became like this famous hockey player however he got injured and while recovering from that injury they i don't know like kicked him from the team okay so i forgot to say that he also had a fight with a fan in the grocery store and then he's also known for not being a team player and so that the fight and the injury kind of all just resulted in him taking a break from the team and what they advise him to do is basically just to like better his image and show everything everyone that he's not a jerk because <laughs> he played in the National Hockey League basically now he's stuck playing for this team in the minor league in this town called Harvest Hollow which is where he used to live and Parker and Brandon which is Parker's brother and they still live there but you know like I said Logan moved away but the minor league that he's stuck playing for is in that town so he's kind of moving back temporarily and Parker is the social media manager for that team and so now Parker and Logan are going to be spending time together and you know all those feelings were coming back up it says fake dating because I think this is where it's going I'm not going to explain you the details of it not to give you too many spoilers but basically she lied to her dad about Logan being her date for this gala which is technically her dad's birthday now logan's gonna be her date you know but they're gonna fake it anyways um i'm liking the book it's definitely giving fall vibes like i said i'm gonna take a shower get ready for bed read a little bit before i actually go to sleep i guess i'll see you when i see you
guys, so it's the next day. And I, of course, finished Just Don't Fall by Anna St. Clair. So the first thing I want to say is that this book has a dual POV. I don't know if you know this already about me, but I absolutely love... A love? <laughs> what was that? It was like me trying to say adore and love at the same time and not choosing either one. Or just putting them together anyways i absolutely love dual povs one of the main reasons i love dual povs is because it's usually like the girl being like oh he probably doesn't like me i'm probably thinking too much of it and the guy is usually like oh my gosh she's so beautiful she's stunning i'm in love with her <laughs> and it's just funny to me because i'm like oh. second thing i wanted to say is that i already mentioned this but this is like a fake dating trope and i just wanted to say that i usually don't lean towards fake dating tropes but when it's done right like in this book i love it i don't know how to explain it but like usually fake dating tropes you know they're predictable but i mean like kind of every romance book is like you know you expect them to end up together not always but most of the time they do but like fake dating is like more than predictable you're like oh you know they're gonna fake date but like obviously they're gonna develop feelings for each other but like i don't know something about this book i just enjoyed it nevertheless next thing i wanted to say part of the reason why i loved this book so much is because it was giving me the biggest Guillermo girls vibes get this okay the love interest his name is logan and no he doesn't have blonde hair he has dark hair but nevertheless okay his name is logan and second the small town it's called harvest hollow hello stars hollow harvest hollow hmm like if you haven't watched Grimoire Rose, you're probably like very confused. And obviously it's set during the fall season. Now I absolutely adore Grimoire Girls. Like it's one of my favorite comfort shows ever. And yeah, for me that was just something that made me love the book even more. Really, I thought this was going to be a cute, quick romance read. But it took me by surprise because I did end up connecting to the characters and falling in love with them. Especially Logan. And it's just not me connecting the Logan from this book and Logan from Grimoire Girls. Like, that's not influencing me at all. I'm Team Jess, always and forever. Maybe this whole thing can be solved between me and you. We just sat down, had a little heart to heart. He could tell me his issues. I'll tell him mine. Jess? I promise I'll speak slowly. Yeah, make up, make out. I mean, so it's not because of that. It's just like Logan in this book, like the character. He was just like the cutest, sweetest ever. I'm not gonna say too much, okay? But basically, there was this bookstore date that he planned. And just like from that to like, he would remember so many small details about her. But like, those are the most important. To like so many other things that I just, yeah, loved him. And last thing, I just want to say, and I've mentioned this before, but I'm not the biggest fan of like really, really heavy spice. And when books have like little spice, I don't mind it because, you know, I usually just skip them but this book didn't have any spice at all which is more of my preference but still like i could feel all the feels and the tension and the romance was there like it was still very much there and i just love that because you know it shows that you don't have to have necessarily like just a lot of spice or for it to be only focused on that for it to still have those type of moments i hope you understand what i'm saying but yeah and finally my rating of this book i decided to give it a four and a half star rating yeah very close to being a five star read i just again i loved it i loved it so much i love the characters yeah that was my rating i don't know which book i'm gonna read next but again i'll see you soon hopefully hey guys so change of outfit and location change my mom was like hey you wanna come with me to walmart and i was like sure so i'm gonna start reading the book in the car yeah <laughs> Once, since I started reading the second book of this video. So I'm reading Awkward in October. I'm almost to the 100 page mark. What I know right now is it's written from the POV of the main character called Theodora. And she's like single. She lives with her parents. She's 
like in her 30s I think and she's been working in a health insurance company for like many many years and she's basically like not happy at all and one day something provokes her to quit her job and move to Wethersfield it's like a town in Connecticut and also bought like this old house which needs a lot of renovating and all of this is also because she has like this favorite book called The Witch of Blackbird Pond. She's reread it like so many times. The setting of the book, it was kind of like inspired by that small town. So that was also kind of like the main reason why she moved to that specific town. But anyway, so when she moves in, she has this neighbor. They have a very awkward first encounter and it's mostly like her fault. But right now she's just like exploring the town, getting the house fixed. But yeah, that's it. It's not pulling me in. Like I'm not invested yet. And it's honestly been kind of boring. I don't know. If this doesn't like kick up or I don't get another interaction between the grumpy neighbor and her soon I'm gonna I don't know what I'm gonna do I hope it gets better I don't know okay I'll do you guys if I need to say anything else So I finished Awkward in October. Where do I start? You know, it was just like really hard for me to get into this book all throughout the beginning and even when I hit like the halfway point it was just like boring really like only the last few chapters things started to pick up I enjoyed it a little bit but by that point I hadn't connected to the characters so like even though you know things got interesting I didn't really enjoy it as much as I could have another thing I didn't like about this book was just like the main character when you don't like the main character and it's told from that main character's point of view it's just it's hard to like the book it is i didn't hate theo which is the main character she was just like so cringy and she's 32 years old and like just acting immature and like childish and i'm like girl she would just like do things and say things i don't know i just found it very hard to take her seriously and just like connect with her really i did like a lot the love interest his name is carter yeah he was just so sweet he acted his age he reminded me so much of luke danes from Gilmore girls and yes yeah, so i just liked him a lot and the other thing i liked about this book was this other character called edith she's basically carter's grandma she was just so funny like every time she was in a scene i was laughing carter and edith are really the only reason why i didn't give this book a one star rating to be honest that being said my rating for this book is two and a half stars and really like i don't again i don't hate theo okay i just didn't really love her but yeah so now that i'm done with that book i can move on to the third and final book of this video which is called autumn sky gonna get some reading done tonight i don't think i'm gonna get that far but see you soon hopefully Okay, so I didn't explain this to you guys at all, but my family and I went on a mini road trip that day. It had something to do with my dad's job, but we kind of made it a road trip. We kind of just drove around the island, visiting other cities, and then we went out to eat. But why am I telling you all this? You're probably wondering. Well, because this is all I could film, and I wasn't able to give you guys any updates at all, because there was just too much noise. So this is the only clip you'll see of me reading in the car. The next clip you'll see of me is an update back at my house. So yeah, that's all I wanted to say. back home so you can clearly tell to tell you exactly what page i left off on okay page 116 so i'm halfway through this has like 270 pages i think so i have a couple hundred pages left i like have no desire to sleep at all so i think i can finish it tonight so basically it focuses on autumn and Ren, but that's short for Warren. Autumn is a triplet. Her other two sisters, one, her name is Winter, and the other, Summer. Probably guessed that one. And Autumn and Winter are identical twins. Summer isn't. And so she tells us that, like, because, you know, she's a triplet, she's always, like, never really been alone. And specifically more with her identical twin. Like, they've always been together 24-7. And, you know, like, they have an even more deeper connection. But like as she grew up, Summer kind of like found her own friends. Then Winter got a boyfriend, so Autumn like was just left feeling empty inside. Like 
Again, she's always been with her two sisters, specifically Winter. And so then she got a boyfriend. And so after like they would break up, she would jump into another relationship and it would just like be like that constantly because she really like can't stand being alone. However, a couple months ago, she broke up with her, you know, recent ex-boyfriend. And it was because of like those problems, you know, clinginess, the need of her being with him like 24-7. And so then she like realized she needs to be alone for Sometimes she needs to be single. She needs to find out who she is separate from autumn. I mean, not autumn. Winter and summer. She needs to figure that out. And she like promises herself she will do that before jumping into another relationship. However, her sister Summer is getting married. And, you know, obviously Summer is going to have her fiance, soon to be husband. And Winter is bringing a date. And so they both kind of insist autumn to bring a date. So, you know. Autumn needs to date. Kind of like a temporary boyfriend type of thing. Okay, now, Ren is a billionaire. <laughs> Let's start with that. He's like a space entrepreneur. He's an investor, just a bunch of stuff. I don't really know how to explain. And he's like completely the opposite. He's an only child raised by his grandmother because his parents like worked a lot. And so he's always been alone in a way, like, and he's always enjoyed being alone, being by himself. He's been in relationships, but like, They've never lasted long. However, Ren, because of his work, he has to go to like this event where he has to speak, give a speech. And these events, he's gone to one before, several actually. And in each event, they always try to like pair him up. Like when men go to talk with Ren and he thinks it's like something regarding, you know, his job. It's really to like pair him up with his daughter, something like that. That's tiring and annoying. And so Leah, his assistant, also his best friend, proposes this plan that he brings a date, let everyone know that he has a girlfriend so no one tries to pair him up with any woman and they back off. And so Ren needs also kind of like a temporary girlfriend situation. Okay, now Summer's best friend, Greta, makes her a profile on like this billionaire dating app and coincidentally Ren matches with Autumn. They meet like through video call and they quickly realize they need each other and they can help each other out and they have mutual benefits. And so they propose this fake dating thing. Ren can go with Autumn to her sister's wedding so her family can back off and they can, you know, be like, yeah, you brought a date, whatever. And Autumn can go with Ren to the event so everyone can also back off and he can focus on the event and what he has to say. And so then they meet in real life and it goes from there. I'm much like further into the story a lot has happened but obviously I'm not gonna tell you. I'm really liking it. I already could tell since the beginning I was like invested and I'm excited to see where it goes. So I think that's all I have to say. Yeah, I'm gonna try to finish it tonight. Try to update you also tonight if I finish it and it's not too late. I guess I'll see you when I see you. So, okay, the first thing I want to say, this book has a dual POV and, you know, I just instantly loved it because of that. Another thing I wanted to say is, you know, this is what I mean. I like being able to connect to the characters. In both POVs, I was being given stories of both characters' past and, you know, childhood, and that made me connect to the character. And, like, throughout the book, I just got to know them. By the end, I was rooting for both of them. I loved them, both characters, and I was so happy at the end and like how it ended. Even though like it wasn't as deep as a connection as I felt with other book characters, but I'll take what I can. And so at least I appreciate that. Okay, and then Autumn, I just wanted to say that I loved her. I loved how confident she was. I loved how she knew what she wanted since the beginning. And even though she had some things to realize and work through, I still love that I got to like be a part of like that journey with her, if that makes sense. And of course, I also gotta say that I loved Ren. Not mentioning the fact that he loves rom-com books and movies. Big mistake. Big. Huge. Like not mentioning that, which was like enough for me. He was just like the cutest and I loved how thoughtful he was. And I also loved how even though he had some things to work through and realize as well, he did that by the end and he became just like a better version of himself. And part of that was because of Autumn. So I loved how they just both challenged each other or just made each other a better person, a better version of themselves. And yeah, um, I think that's all I've got to say. This was, you know, a quick, easy, cute romance but nevertheless I loved it and I think it was definitely worth 
to read. Okay, and finally the rating. I decided to give it four stars. You know, it wasn't like a five star read for me, but however, I still loved it. Okay guys, so that means we've reached the end of this video. I think my favorite book that I read in this video was the first one, which was Just Don't Fall. But yeah, I guess that's all I have to say. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't yet, and let me know which book you're currently reading, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!